Hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our Arctic Fox Talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about the Arctic Foxes here at Kent, so let's introduce them. We currently have two Arctic Foxes, namely Teddy and his niece Flo. We do often get asked how can you tell them apart? It's nice to say it's pretty straightforward. Teddy has a funny front foot. It's slightly twisted to the side because when he was a baby he had an injury. In the wild he probably would not have survived. Um, in captivity it doesn't hold him back in the slightest. He can run from one side of his enclosure to the other in a matter of seconds and in fact he plays on his injury for attention. If he sees people and he thinks he might be able to get a fuss or food all of a sudden his limp gets very very bad. Don't fall for it. Since Wildwood is dedicated to British wildlife visitors are quite often surprised to see that we have arctic foxes. As the name suggests if you want to see them in the wild today you have to head north into the Arctic Circle. Arctic foxes live in northern Scandinavia, Russia, Alaska, Canada, Greenland and Iceland. In fact, and I have to get this one right, they are Iceland's largest native land mammal, which is not bad going for an animal the size of a cat. But they were once found in Britain too. Fossils prove that Arctic foxes lived here in the cold phases of the Ice Age, around about 100,000 years ago and 300,000 years ago. When the glaciers finally retreated northwards, the Arctic foxes went with them. The reason why is quite simple. Arctic foxes do better in cold conditions than red foxes, meaning that they can avoid they can avoid competing with each other. Arctic foxes have lots of special features that help them to survive at extremely low temperatures, but some are less obvious than others. If you compare the faces of red foxes with those of Arctic foxes, you realise that the Arctics have shorter muzzles and smaller rounder ears which reduces heat loss. This is seen in lots of Arctic animals, including polar bears and snowshoe hares. Another common adaptation is to have fur growing on the soles of your feet, which doesn't just stop heat loss, it also prevents you slipping on icy surfaces. Arctic foxes are the only members of the entire dog and fox family that have furry feet. But the real key to their su success is their fur. Now this is real, genuine Arctic fox fur. It's their winter coat, their white woolly winter coat. They shed it in the spring. More about that in a few minutes time. But this will be over six centimetres deep on the fox and it provides better insulation than the fur of polar bears or reindeer. To give you an idea just how good this fur is, a standard day in the Arctic in the winter temperatures will get to minus 40 and further down to minus 60 degrees centigrade. A polar bear cub will start to shiver when you hit zero degrees. An arctic fox will not start to shiver until you hit minus 70 degrees centigrade. It's that good. The other question we're regularly asked by visitors is how do they cope with the summer in Britain? Well the truth is if you are geared up for surviving inside the arctic you have to be able to cope with not only cold but warm. In the winter time you'll have nearly two months of total darkness but in the summer time you'll have two months of complete sunshine. For starters the 
Arctic foxes lose their thick woolly coat in the spring. Their summer coat is much finer and shorter so they won't overheat. It's also a completely different colour. The winter coat is nice and white so you can hide in the snow and you won't get spotted by predators. The summer coat is a grey brown colour and that helps, is, that helps them to camouflage against the soil and the rocks. Here in Kent, um, in the hot summers, we make sure that the foxes don't overheat. Firstly, because this enclosure has lots of trees around it for shade. Second, our keepers make special ice lollies for the Arctic foxes, blocks of ice that have fish in them. And third, their den is actually built out of a walk-in refrigerator. However, I should point out that I've actually come to see how the foxes are doing, the Arctic foxes, on the hottest days of the year. And I've found Teddy and Flo sitting out in the sun, sunbathing. You couldn't make it up. Life is tough for wild Arctic foxes. They do not hibernate. Often they're the largest mammals active in the winter in the Arctic. They don't tend to live more than about three years, though five to six is not unknown. We know for a fact that in captivity, an Arctic fox can live until over 20. They also have very large litters of puppies. Um, as standard, again, five to eight, but the big record was, oh, again, 25. And sadly, this is because most of the babies will not survive to adulthood. Despite the hardships, um, Arctic foxes are surprisingly um, outgoing personalities, quite often described as playful and inquisitive. Their local name amongst the Samai people of Lapland translates as the bold one. They regularly follow wolves and polar bears, both animals that will happily catch and eat Arctic foxes, in order to steal food from their kills. And when early polar explorers uh, started heading north in Europe, Alaska and Canada, <clears throat> their campsites were frequently ransacked by nosy Arctic foxes. So it is nice to be able to say that Teddy and Flo's cheerful, cheeky attitude is perfectly normal for Arctic foxes. And we hope you'll be able to see them when you visit us here at Wildwood.